hello welcome back to my channel and to another reading vlog and to part three of rating my library's mm romance novels not that i do much rating anymore i just read it and then rate the book in general not really my library's collection but Anyway, I'm starting this on a Sunday because I finished a book this morning and I know that if I pick up another one and then try to start this vlog on the Monday, it's not gonna happen. So, to kick off this vlog, we are starting with The Nerd and the Prince by B.G. Thomas. This is part of the Dream Spun Desires collection. I have noticed these everywhere at work. They are all over the place. This is number 66 and this is part of the small town dreams aspect of it. I am very excited for this. It sounds like every Hallmark movie that you fall in love with ever. So we're following our main character Jason who is a small town business owner and all he really wants is to find the kind of love that you would normally find in a fairy tale. Of course though he doesn't believe those kinds of loves really exist until Adam moves in next door. And honestly, Adam seems to be something out of one of those fairy tales themselves. He's European, he's cultured, and he is interested in Jason. The only thing is, Adam is hiding a bit of a secret, and that is that his full name is Amadeo Montefalcone, and he's a prince of a small royal country. A small royal country. You know what? We're gonna go with it. But the only problem he's got with that is that he doesn't want to rule and he does not want any part of the loveless marriage that his parents have arranged for him back home. So he ran away. He's falling for Jason. What the hell is gonna happen when Jason finds out that Adam is actually royalty? It just sounds so cute and so sweet. And as soon as I read it, I knew that I had to borrow it. I am very excited to get into it. And sticking with the theme of my last reading vlog where I was gonna update you like 20, 40, 60, and so on percent of the way through the book, I have gone and tabbed it just so that I'll know when exactly I need to remember to update you guys. Good morning, happy Monday. Also, there is a cat behind me right here. I have just hit the 20% mark, so I'm here for my update. It's not going to be very long though because nothing has really happened yet. So far, we've just met both of our main characters, both Jason and Adam, and this is a dual point of view book as well. It just kind of shifts every now and then through the chapter. Not a whole lot has happened just yet. They've met each other. Jason brought over a housewarming gift since him and Adam are neighbors. I do like though that Adam English isn't the greatest, which is actually pretty realistic if he is a prince from a very small European country. Like, he speaks English kind of well enough to get by, but then there are certain things and phrases that he hasn't used before or hasn't heard before, and Jason finds it so endearing. This book is flying by. I am already up to the 40% mark, and honestly, not much has happened since the last update. There's one thing I will say without spoiling anything, and that is that Tim can go to hell. He can bugger off and let Jason and Adam be happy. I was thinking before as well when I was getting my breakfast that I don't think this will be anything more than a three-star read unless something happens in the rest of the novel that convinces me to change my mind. Because while it is cute, it's exactly the book version of a Hallmark movie. And what do we expect from a Hallmark movie? It's cute, it's sweet, and I feel like there's not always a whole lot more to it than that. Every now and then you get that one really good one that comes along that you will rewatch every year, but I don't think this is gonna be that one. There is though, I have to say, a lot of internal monologue in these chapters, which I think is what's eating up so many of the pages, because when you think about what has actually happened in the plot so far, there's not a whole lot to speak of. What? I know I didn't just read what I think I did. I swear I have moved. I've been to work and I've come home. And what time is it now? 8.30 in the evening. I am currently at the 60% mark, not going to give an update this time though, just because there's nothing to update on. Still the exact same thoughts I had at 40%. So let's just keep reading. I am honestly so close to finishing this book in one day. I have just hit the 80% mark. We have less than 50 pages to go. 
what is this? My thoughts haven't really changed from last time. It's probably still going to be a three, three and a half. We did read about the scene where Jason finds out that Adam is actually Amadeo, the Prince of Monterosia. He didn't really have anything to say about it. He'd wanted a fairy tale romance and he got it. So he was kind of happy about the whole thing. And also because it's a Hallmark movie, there was no real discussion about what would happen regarding that like there was no talk about you know are you gonna go back to being a prince like what is our future gonna look like together it was just a call you're a prince we're in a relationship now good to know i do want to point out though that there are a couple of things that don't seem to quite match up in this book the first thing i noticed is that when jason is talking about his parents it's either jason or adam one of them is talking about their parents and i'm pretty sure it meant to say lgbt but it had like GLBT and the letters were completely the wrong way around. And I'm like, I feel like that's something you would notice in the editing process. There's also the fact, and I spoke about this earlier today, that I found it really interesting that Adam, because he's a European prince, is not fluent in English. And in one of the previous chapters that I just read, Adam himself in his own chapter references that he is fluent in English as well as a couple of other languages. And I'm like, well, clearly you're not because he struggles with certain phrases and trying to say certain things in English. So I'm like, you're not exactly fluent then, are you? And it's just like characters knowing things that they shouldn't necessarily know. So one of our characters, Tim, the one I said could go to hell, he was hitting on Adam at the start of the novel and Adam was kind of going along with it because, you know, he'd never been pursued by another man like that before. But reading from Jason's perspective, we know that Tim is actually engaged to a girl in the town. And so we don't like Tim, but reading from Adam's point of view, he doesn't know that. But then a couple of chapters later, apparently he does know that, even though no one told him. And since he's barely left his house, he would have had no way to find out. So there are a few things like that that are jumping out at me through this book, which I guess I probably shouldn't be reading too much into it because it's a Hallmark movie. And we are done with The Nerd and the Prince. That honestly flew by. I think I could have read it in one sitting if I didn't have to go to work today. But honestly, like, I'm just amazed at the fact that this book was 250 pages long. And really, I don't actually think a whole lot of it happened. And even though it's like an unrealistic romance, the ending was just weird as heck. Like, there was this weird fight scene and then Jason gets in the middle of it and he's all like no like don't hurt him and then he gets flung into this darkness and you're kind of like the heck the prince running away for love I can I can get behind that but him having to fight like the minotaur that's a bit of a stretch. Okay, let's talk about the next read really quick. I'm not going to start it now because it's almost 11 p.m. and I am ready for bed. But this is another book in the Dream Spun Desires world, and that is The Missing Ingredient by Brian Lancaster. So this book follows Marcus, who is an up-and-coming chef in London, and about a year ago, his best friend Rain was killed in an accident, leaving behind two young daughters and her husband, Tom. Tom is just so consumed in his grief that he is not really open to accepting help from anyone but Marcus is so persistent and has such a caring nature that he finally manages to wear Tom down and agrees to help the girls with their homework and cooking home cooked meals and just helping them restructure their life. Eventually though Tom ends up confessing to Marcus that he has developed romantic feelings and considering their relationship and the predicament that they found themselves in who really knows how that is going to go down? I mean, we know because it's a romance. But anyway. Good morning and happy Tuesday. I feel like this is a horrible angle, but we're going to go with it anyway. I have started reading The Missing Ingredient by Brian Lancaster, but there was another thought that I had about The Nerd and the Prince that I wanted to share just before I forgot. Especially because I've noticed such a difference between these two books already. In The Nerd and the Prince, I kept saying how it feels like the book version of a Hallmark movie, and in saying that, I wanted to talk a bit more about the characters. I feel like they were very two-dimensional. I feel like we did not get... I mean, we got a lot of backstory about them, but nothing that really made us feel connected to either of these characters. It was exactly like watching a Hallmark movie pan out, like, you go from A to B, there are no real complications, and no real connections established throughout the, 
throughout the book. With this book already though, I am loving both of our main characters. So far, I think it is just a sole point of view. We are only reading from Marcus's perspective, which is a little bit disappointing. I do really wish we could read from Tom's point of view, but I'm loving that Marcus, he has seen Tom and the girls, and after his best friend's funeral, Tom asked for a little bit of time so that him and the girls could, you know, settle into a new dynamic without their mother. But Tom never reached out to Marcus again after the funeral, and Marcus never reached out either because he wasn't sure if he was welcome. So when he sees Tom and the girls in this diner one day, and he sees just how tired and shit <laughs> Tom is looking he really starts to feel this duty of care for his goddaughters so even though we are only reading from Marcus's point of view I feel like the characters in this particular book already have so much more depth than the characters in The Nerd and the Prince which I am enjoying so much more <laughs> Good morning and happy Wednesday. I barely filmed anything yesterday just because my day was very full and I actually didn't have time to read other than what I read in the morning that you saw. And I tried to read a little bit last night, but when I woke up this morning, my book was face down on the floor. So <laughs> apparently that didn't work very well. I'm about 50% of the way through the missing ingredient and I'm definitely enjoying it, but I do have to say that Tom's mother is beginning to annoy the crap out of me. So we know that Tom was struggling with his girls, just trying to do everything by himself. And when Marcus sees that, he ends up creating this schedule between himself, Tom, and Tom's mother, Moira. And things were going so well, but Moira has this very traditional view that the girls need a woman in their lives in order for their family to be together. And so she keeps telling Tom, she's like, you know, let Marcus have his own life and get out there, start dating again, get a woman back in your life to take after the girls. It's almost like she's manipulating him to get back into the dating scene and to kind of slowly edge Marcus back out of their lives so he's not as involved with the girls. And you know, all Marcus wants is to make Tom happy so he's gone along with it. But then he gets a call from Moira being, oh, you know, Tom's on a date and I've got to do something. So can you look after the girls? And it's like, Moira, you can't have this both ways. You either want him to be part of their lives or you don't. He's not a babysitter backup plan. Once again, I promise I have moved. It is so much later in the day now. I finished work hours ago and I'm only just getting around to picking up this book again. My heart rate has increased so much since I opened this book and I've literally read one page because before I left for work this morning, I made the mistake of skipping ahead a few pages to see what was gonna happen in the chapter and what I saw made me so mad and I forgot all about it until I opened the book again and now I'm stressed. And yep, like what is my heart rate at right now? Oh, I feel like I'm like my breath's shaking when I breathe in. Does it, this happen to anyone else? Like if you read something that's not even stressful, but your heart rate just starts like pounding. We are currently at 93, 97 BPM when five minutes ago, when I wasn't reading my book, I was sitting at 63. And it's just increasing. We're at 102 right now. Are you joking me? Is that normal? Let's tackle this. We are so close to being done. We're in the last 20% of this book. Surely things need to be resolved. And soon. I was thinking that I was going to give this book a three star. Kind of like the same as the other one. But everything that I've just read, I think is going to bump it up to a four. Like, it's not the same as The Nerd and the Prince, which was classic Hallmark movie. This story actually has so much depth. Not saying the other one didn't have depth, but this one has more. Like, the characters feel so real, and the drama feels real. And, like, everything that's just happened with Jeanette and Katie, and I'm like... I'm gonna turn off the camera, I'm gonna finish the book, and then I'll update you guys later. I have reread this paragraph three times because it is the most beautiful thing I think I've ever read. And it's got me on like that verge of I could potentially cry if I keep reading this, but we haven't hit that point yet. I'm not gonna say anything, I'm just gonna read you these couple of lines. I've been given a rare gift, sent a second soulmate who unconditionally loved me and my family who has already supported us through the good times and especially the bad. Someone I let down because I wasn't brave enough to tell him that I loved him and someone I eventually pushed away. So my question is this, do you think a man who lacked courage and respect but who has learned his lesson and would never do the same again, 
who promises to stand proud next to the person, to the man he loves with all his heart, could be worth a second chance. My heart. Good afternoon and happy Thursday. I've just been working from home this morning, so I haven't had a chance to update you guys on anything yet. But I did finish reading The Missing Ingredient last night. I don't really think I want to add anything to my thoughts because I feel like I expressed almost all of them while I was reading that book. Like I said, I ended up giving it a three and a half, four stars on Goodreads. But yeah, I think I covered all of my thoughts during that reading process. <laughs> It was very cute. The characters had a lot of depth. The storyline felt very realistic. I liked the drama. I liked all of our characters, which was kind of surprising. And there are a few things that kind of went unanswered or could have been expanded on. Sure, but that's the same in a majority of books. But I do want to move on because I have already started reading the next book and I need to update you guys on it. This is the third and final book that I have borrowed from the Dreams Fun Desires series for the purpose of this video. And that is Rocking the Cowboy by Skylar M. Cates. Now I am already like at the 60% mark in this book. I started reading it last night before I went to bed and then ended up I think making it maybe 20% of the way through and then I was reading it again this morning and I don't know what it is about these books, but they are all flying by. Like, if you just let me sit and read in one sitting, I would have devoured all of these. So, Rocking the Cowboy focuses on Remy, who is this international pop star. And at one of these concerts in Athens, a fence between him and the crowd fell down. The crowd stormed the stage and, you know, surrounded him. Because of that experience, he has developed a little bit of anxiety and he feels as though music has kind of gotten away from him because he hasn't been able to sit down and even write a song, play his guitar, do anything that he prides himself on being able to do. In order to kind of get him away, give him a little bit of privacy and hopefully get his mojo back, his manager, Buddy, sends him off to this ranch. On that ranch, we meet Jed, who just so happens to be Buddy's son and their relationship is very strenuous. Jed and Remy have met once before, a long time ago when they were kids, before Remy was famous, and Remy had a little bit of a crush on him back then and it is coming back full force when he is seeing full grown Jed like He's a ranch man. He is not soft in any way and Remy is loving it. I am also loving this book so far. I think it is very cute. I am loving our characters so far because Remy is so confident in himself and he owns that confidence completely. But then around Jed, he is almost comfortable enough to open up his more vulnerable side as well, which Jed loves to see. He does not want any of the fake Remy the pop star. He wants the real thing. And then you've got Jed who unknowingly is always putting himself down saying he's just a simple man like what he does isn't all that great it's nothing special and then Remy comes along and he's like dude you gotta stop doing that to yourself so they're both a little bit hurt both a little bit broken a bit damaged from previous relationships and familial pressures but when they come together, they both find a way to be happy and to move on from those things. And it is very sweet, very cute. We still have a long way to go though, and I'm wondering what's going to go wrong. It's kind of giving me Spring Strings vibes by Lily Morton. It's a very similar kind of plot. Let's see though if this lives up to Spring Strings because I loved that novella.